Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Victory at Sea Pacific, episode number 30, Big 3-0. I'm actually surprised how long this series has gone already, 30 episodes. It hasn't felt that way. So I guess despite the bugs, I must be really enjoying it. And uh, I, like, I can feel us continuing this. I, there's been a good viewership for this. Not that I really, that is not the like requirement for my videos. I do this as a hobby, it's for fun. I enjoy playing this game and I wouldn't be playing it if I didn't enjoy it. So we're gonna unpause and get things going. A couple of events coming up. Obviously we have this big battle down in Guadalcanal. Um, and Task Force 22, who has been, I would say maybe the most active force of mine, um, is gonna have another chance at some action. Now the subs, I. I think that we have to be utilizing them more. I'm not even sure exactly how it works. They have radar, right? So I'm gonna try to use them on the surface out in the middle of the Philippine Sea over here. Uh, hopefully we can just catch some merchants. And I believe that their radar should allow them to operate uh, without being detected, or I should say, at least they can detect something before it detects them. That's the idea didn't work so well in this area so I'm guessing that the I, I think it is okay or a fair thing for them to allow basic ports or any other ports for that matter to have radar of a kind um, I'm hoping that that's the reason why it was caught here because I don't think the Japanese with this force five, well, two, one heavy cruiser maybe they would have radar I don't know I don't know the situation of Japanese radar in World War II like the development cycle of it I know that well, we can see that the American ships were loading it on, but uh, we also are chasing after this guy. I think that that's going to happen in this episode, maybe. So we'll just speed it up, and maybe we can get to that point a little bit faster. We're launching Carry Task Force Bravo with a full contingent of forces. By the way, did I want to change out... I think I'm going to, they're right here, we're going to do some quick loading. I want to exchange one of them, to one of the two, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I want to go with a 50-50 split, or at least a 50-50 split on, who wants to take it, Enterprise or Yorktown? Let's do a 50-50 split on the Enterprise and let Yorktown be the more aggressive bomber. Didn't really know which one to choose, but it has to be one of them. I don't have a great justification. That's what I was looking for, actually, was how do I justify this? So we're going to have to actually swap these in, and then, you know, and of course, the moment we get them on there, we're going to end up needing to replace all the hell, uh, Wildcats with Hellcats. We must, that must be the next step for us. I just can't imagine that we have to, any longer to wait. Okay, so get these guys going again, and again, as I mentioned in the last episode, we want them to kind of patrol a little bit further south, because eventually the Yorktown Saratoga CTF Able is going to be moving into this area. Um, we'll just shift everyone south, but we want to take this stuff first, and I haven't really committed much forces to the bombing of Komodorsky and like retaking that and whatnot, but I think we're okay up there, so let's continue to unpause and get this one into action. This is the big one. It's the one we want. I still think this submarine is doing okay. can check, just see how she's doing. Unfortunately, going into the world map, I mean the battle map, you never know what that's going to do. Obviously we've seen ships being teleported. Last episode was not particularly good for bugs in this sense. Um, but she appears to be moving the correct way. Good. And let's see, her pursuit is not really pursuing. We can run deep. There's no difference in running shallow, running deep. I, I guess maybe it helps avoid detection a little bit. But that is, appears to be the correct direction. And we can even stay on the Guitaro um, until... Oh, we went deep. Now oh, it's really hard to see her. Well, we can stay on the Guitaro until um, uh, the battle with Task Force 22 begins. 
just to make sure that we are still getting away, and it does look like we are. Good thing they don't model like the amount of air and battery time and all that, because that would that would complicate things, surely. Okay. Taking a meandering path, but kind of in my direction, which I don't like. Oh my gosh, we're way out there. Heavens. <clears throat> so let's continue that way. Looks like we should be able to escape this then. They're moving right to left now, so that means that we should just move a little bit more to our left. A little bit more northward. So I guess we'll just have to stay away from the islands entirely. So it just it works a little differently than I well, I mean that was that's what submarines would want to do anyway, right? So Alright, let me at this point I know that we're very soon going to get that battle. So let me at this point give a very long movement order and hope that that keeps her busy for the remainder of the battle that we're going to fight. And let me go check on Task Force 22 now, because <laughs> I would have actually expected them to have... Oh my god, they're in the middle of the... Okay, well, let's just ignore this. We will not, certainly not be... <laughs> uh... I don't, it kind of looks like they're stuck in the middle of the island. I don't want to go look and find out that that is, in fact, the case. We're going to let them keep doing whatever it is that they are doing. And should we throw, this is a good question, should we throw the Louisville maybe in with this Northampton class? I mean, think, four cruisers is better than three, right? And I don't think the heavy cruisers are going to help that much. The main thing that they're doing in this group, in fact, there's none in this group. So they're not doing anything. And I think that the amount of, let's just check the AAA on these guys. We have nine, seven, eight, and seven. That is a ton of AAA. I mean, not on any one of them, it's a decent amount, but having four of them in the same fleet, I think they're probably good. They have three Clemsons. I actually wish we had more Clemsons, more anythings, so I could send some with uh, <clears throat> these Northamptons. In fact, maybe that's what I should start making with the very few amount of war bonds I have available, thanks to the American public for donating those. It is what happened. But let's go back to this. We know we want this battle to happen. Three, maybe we should have come in from the other side to cut off their retreat, but I think that they're just going to go for it. It's two versus three and one. I mean, it's a very close fight battle. We're going to make sure our cruisers stay out of the fight this time. How's... You're still technically in battle, huh? Oh, okay, sub five. Where are you? Oh, you've loaded on a few torpedoes. Okay, still move down and refit from there. We did manually order a few of our supply convoys to go do the noble thing and resupply. Okay, so making a toll. Yeah, we're, we're getting these things solved. And we are bringing in more supply convoys, so I think we're doing okay. That, that all looks good to me. Whoops, 200x, not, not exactly what I was going for. Okay, there it is, Indispensable Strait. That's it, that's the name. Iron Bottom Sound, as I, I think I mentioned last episode. That's how, that's how I know it. <laughs> and it wouldn't be known as that yet, because there hasn't been like crazy number of battles like there was in real life. So let's just uh, move a little bit away from... Oh, actually, we want to move all the way over here so we can better access the enemy. Let's get into a line as well. Start battle. And immediately move this direction as a unit. All right, so what are we up against? That's the big question. I decided to fight this even without knowing what cruiser we're exactly up against. But yeah, it's a small cruiser. I think we're going to be okay here. This looks like a very winnable battle. <clears throat> so we'll just uh, rely on that. I kind of miss it. I Is you? Oh, you works. Did they fix it? I I don't know what I don't know what exactly he's doing. It's somehow toggling some stuff, but so you is doing something. Okay, I just don't know what it does exactly. It turns these off sometimes, maybe. 
Oh, that, it actually is known as that. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's, that's what it's officially known as. Very good. I hadn't seen that yet. <laughs> Indispensable straight. Very cool. Like I said, it'd be fun to come back to this map just to kind of imagine the battles at Guadalcanal. And this must be Henderson Airfield. <clears throat> or what the Americans would call Henderson Airfield. That means the Marines must have launched... There should be a river over here then. Or at least... Maybe it's not a river. It's like a... Well, it is, it's the whole area is tropical and full of little sources of water, so... They didn't take the time to model those, and I don't blame them at all. That's completely okay. It would have been almost overkill. In fact, the design resources are, would be much better spent on... Uh, I'm not going to say it, but, you know... <laughs> It's a very, it's a beautiful map as is. Let's leave it at that. And I think I'm, gonna, I'm just going to babysit these guys so we don't have any problems with... Well, any problems, we'll leave it at that. Lots of leavings at that's. How are you doing? Oh, what you mean to say is I need to go to fleet and make sure you guys are actually in fighting condition. Okay, well, it's obvious you should be... Let's do this, and then manually engage the button down here. What is going on? Oh, yeah, because they've actually fought enough. Defensive technician. Well, let's look at what that does. Alright, so you have Defensive Tactician, which is a commander that knows when to avoid a battle to win a war. Can it be a blessing? No, nah, that's not what we're going to want here. For 20 seconds, enemy attacks against the ship's fleet will have a 50% reduced accuracy, but the fleet may not use torpedoes and other weapons will have reduced accuracy. Interesting. Versus Jack Fletcher. Okay. Frank Jack Fletcher. Come about... Oh, Invulnerable. Having trained... What? I didn't see this one. Having trained the men under his command to keep the ship afloat at all costs, the invulnerable captain can fight on when he should by all rights be at the bottom of the ocean. The ship receives a 13% bonus to damage control and firefighting. Okay, that's nice. I believe that's just a general one. Okay, I think. That's the Indianapolis, right? Yeah. This one is Combat, which is a quick turn. Uh, Lucky, which is have reputation of narrowly avoiding catastrophic damage in battle. The, the ship has a 33% chance of avoiding the effect of a critical hit. And there is a rare breed of men that sees the moment and effectively turn overwhelming odds into a fighting chance for victory. This de ship deals bonus damage if it begins a battle against a force at least 100% stronger than its own. So not going to be effective. All hands on deck we have from the Craven. Uh, 20 seconds, 13% bonus to damage control. We don't expect them to take damage, so none of these that look like are going to be very useful in this combat at least, but that's okay. We'll still fight. Oh, why did you guys go back to... No, don't do that. Do not do that. And what we're going to do is actually peel off the destroyers. We don't actually want them to fight in this one, but we'll do that when the time comes, and when the time comes... When, when will the time come? It will come when we're getting close to engaging the enemy. Now, are you able to use your guns now? You are. That's a good thing, I've been told. And they're almost in range, frankly. So you can see it doesn't exactly look right. It's a little bit too small to be fighting in here. Ships would have much more maneuvering. I mean, they would, they're just smaller. This model is too large for the scale of this pretty narrow body of water by comparison. Like ships, you can have a ship on a group of ships on this side and a group of ships on this side engaging each other, from what I remember. But just you can imagine this whole area with these islands and everything. It makes for a very interesting terrain for little fights. And I don't play World of Warships, but I imagine that this is one good thing about World of Warships. You can kind of imagine things as happening around Guadalcanal. So. So, we'll probably give the attack order in a moment. Let them... Oh, what we need to do is launch... Come on, somebody. Launch a plane so we can see what we're doing here. <clears throat> can even drop a bomb. <laughs> because these guys aren't going to use those bombs for anything else, right? <laughs> but mostly that's for scouting. All right, have the Indy and them move this way. We're going to start breaking formation, I think.
You guys are going to do this, which means basically avoid combat. <clears throat> Uh-oh. What? What happened? Might have to keep this video a little bit shorter as well, because I'm, I'm on a very, very, very strict timeline here. We'll see how that goes. I think I have, like, only 15 more minutes, in fact. So this might be a very, very short episode, unfortunately. Indy, don't get too far ahead. Wait for your sister. <clears throat> oh, okay, well, uh, engaging. Which means that we should go to our Kingfisher and watch the carnage. Oh, that's really cool to see their little wake marks turning. I want to get a little bit further away, like this maybe. Missing on the Hibiki. Second wave incoming. Probably split them like this, just so we can get better arcs of fire. <clears throat> are you using your rear gun? You are. Okay, good. Incoming. Good hits. One down. The Zuzu is a lighter cruiser, so we really don't anticipate much problem, much of a problem in this fight. Oh my gosh, critical hit. I didn't even catch the name on this destroyer. Something Kazi, right? <laughs> and we have the Akazuchi. Hmm, that's actually not does not follow the Kazi trend I'm used to. Oh that first volley was devastating. Wow, brutal. The Indy. Deadly accurate with that first one. Let's turn her a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, she's turning away. Oh my gosh. Got a second wave off. This, I think the volley that's incoming from... Let me get to my... Where's my plane? Don't miss it. Ah, we just barely saw it. Yeah, she is a little bit too far away and a little bit too high for a good cinematic view. Let's take her down to 2200 or so. So definitely going to win this one handily. And then immediately, in fact, what we ought to do is immediately give the Albacore an, uh, an order to move this way as well. You can tell that this would have been you know, not a great thing for a, destroy I mean, a submarine to fight. Rejoin formation. Move on in. Let's uh, role play moving over to pick up survivors. We're not animals after all. These are our fellow seamen, fellow sailors, and although I don't think the Japanese were very keen on surrendering, or you know, I think that they're okay with being rescued when the battle's already over. At least I, I would hope so. It wasn't always that way. I mean, you have definitely have stuff like uh, Japanese, you know the just committing suicide or uh, whether by it on their own taking it into their own hands or by bonsai charge they, they weren't keen on surrendering is what I'm trying to say so in the meantime we can go back over to sub 2 and see how she's doing actually she's still being hotly pursued even though she, that uh, yeah enemy doesn't appear to know where she's going what the oh god she moved back no wonder uh, so we'll just have to babysit this one. I want to pause and give the order for them to um, actually invade that island, though. We'll have to just... I mean, I just I don't know how to deal with this situation if I give an order and it's not followed. How do you deal with that? So let's just head east. I don't know whether it's been better to get okay so let me give a turn order on the just the hope that that is more effective okay slightly less that that would be better okay let me just slow it way down so let's see what happens she's definitely moving this line well I gave her a turn order we'll see what happens when I go over here just long enough to give the invasion order Oh, so you cannot uncall Phibius and Lightning for three days. Okay, well. 
we will have both vessels, re I mean both fleets ready to go by the time that happens. We actually lost this one, so let's retask this spotter, I mean this, uh, yeah, spotter for going over there instead, just so we can keep eyes. And we're probably going to do a pretty heavy launch here. This does seem like too many to me. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five and five. It can't be. One, two, three, four, five. What the heck? I, I must be. I must have counted these wrong then. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. They have four total more. Okay, that's fine. So we split 50 50 on one, and then we split, you know, more conservative for fighters on the other. Shouldn't it? I mean, uh, we now we now know the way to win, or I think we know the way to win. It just it took time, you know. We called it a bug so many times. Maybe it still is. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? One on one fights with four on four, zeros versus wildcats. We're going like four to one against on average. Not really sure that's the best way for. I, I, that doesn't strike me as. It's a little bit too much in favor of the zero. Zero was definitely a better fighter, but I think that's a little overdoing it. However, we've seen that there must be some kind of algorithm, unless we're just rolling really just the huge coincidence on our dice rolls. Um, they do appear to work better in a big formation. It's like I've seen big formations where they engage, and you can see one group of fighters actually not engaging. They all fly off while one only one unit actually tangles up with the other. But I think that's just the graphics, and... Apparently it doesn't really care about that. So they should be going this way. Let's just see which direction they're going. They are. So giving them a turn order appears to be a better option than not giving them a turn order. This fleet is... Uh, it's, okay, it's significantly far away. But it is moving... I don't know. I mean, we may just draw them all the way. Hell, we'll draw them all the way to our carrier. It's fine with me. Just lure them into a big trap. I don't know if it matters, but let's give a turn order like over that. And I can't go back and look at that, but we need to wait three days, which means... So maybe the um, amphibious assault means even if you, you can take these neutral ports and it doesn't start the timer, but if you engage that timer, you do need to wait seven days to do another amphibious, even if it is a neutral. And by the timer, I mean the Wake Island invasion. It must have happened four days ago. And we did get some war bonds from that. I It might be time to start building some destroyers over here. And I know I talked a lot about this already. The, it wasn't the grid. Let me pause so we can do this calculation again. 20 for no 8. No, that was not it. Definitely was not the gridly. I think it was the porters, right? Well, the Fletchers do have more depth charges. Less guns, less range. And I think... What do they have? Uh, they have two versus three. Is that there, or is it just the same? Two versus three. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, I have not died to a submarine yet, but I have. Well, I mean, actually, we're doing extremely well. All right, what's the price difference against aircraft? I'm saying twenty-five for advanced radar and sub hunter. More guns, but that's really not that important, right? Answer your sub hunter. Yeah. So you're. It feels weird because you're paying more money. Well, I mean, the same money for less range, less speed. But you get three depth charges, which is the main thing we need. I, I, might, I might be missing something here, but to me, the depth charges. I guess you get two extra torpedoes, but that's not, again, something we really care about. I might just go with the Fletchers, it's more historical, but I can see it's actually the cost is too much, we'll wait a little bit longer. We might, we might be able to squeak out one, it's going to make replacing a plane very difficult, <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to keep some money in the bank. So it's kind of cool, it does it, the system as it is right now, it forces you to save enough war bonds to at least be able to um, afford uh, those plane switches, even if they are spammy and a little bit unrealistic and whatnot. All right, so what would day what we're looking at? 410. Okay. 
Let's go back to this. I think this is a submarine, yeah. But I see, when I see her turning like that, that's not a good sign. It makes me feel like she hasn't been going in the same direction for a long time. So we'll stay on target like this. So like they aren't going after him, but I don't feel to be I don't feel like I'm getting away. Probably I just need to sit in this screen until we are really, really, really far away. <laughs> Alright, we'll do that. Just wait. Go up to 100 x Nope, we can't. 25x is the max we can do. Well then I'll stop and take a drink, and we'll just admire the two fleets that are slowly growing further and further apart. Hopefully growing further and further apart, at least. She does seem really far away. <laughs> yeah, they're dead stopped now. Ah, okay, so we have the carry task force at Alpha. I might need to rename them CTF Lexington or something like that, so we know exactly which one is which as in which one carries the Lexingtons, which one has the, the Yorktowns or the Essex class. I guess they're, wait. It's the Yorktown and the Enterprise, sorry. Yeah, Yorktown class. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, she's on the move. Am I too far away? Am I getting away? She suddenly went active. Yeah, bizarre. It's like we can't get away from her. She knows. She knows where we are somehow. Not really. She stopped again? No, the game froze. She's pretty doing pretty well staying pursuing. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> you would think, I was hoping, thinking, everything, that she'd start going back to port. All right, it's been one more day. What do we have? One more day to wait before the three-day amphibious assault thing is over. And I only have uh, about three more minutes. And they're stuck now. We've been underwater for three days, sir. Our batteries are... <laughs> we have men pedaling treadmills <laughs> in order to... We also have no oxygen. <laughs> Men have adapted to breathing carbon dioxide. <laughs> I don't know what the longest they could stay under for, but I'm guessing 24 hours would be about the limit. Maybe more, but I don't think so. That seems like a really long time for a World War II submarine to be underwater. Must almost be time for that amphibious. Are they really still? I mean, this is a long distance. Nah, it's not that long. They did make that move towards us. Hey, I'll be happy if this fleet continues to tail me. As long as I get out. As long as I get to my carriers. Which is what we should try to be doing, so we want to move a little bit further east. If we can. Alright, let's just count. One. Uh, okay, let's hold shift. One... Two, three, four, five, six. I got lost around six. Slow it down and let's see what happens. Well, we are good deals out. Now let's get back to the main event, which I think is this. Two days, what? Okay, so we have another two days. Probably it's close to one day, but it hasn't quite reached that mark, and so they're still rounding it uh, up. It's probably like floor of the function. Well, I mean, we don't really have... Uh, boy. Oh, Nelly. Okay, the good thing this is not... <laughs> Let's give them the order to move. Good thing I paid attention. Almost didn't, though. We're very close, is what I should be saying. Okay, that's going to take care of the cruiser and the battle cruiser, and then we'll probably split up this second group of four into two groups of two, and likewise with this second group of four into two groups of two, but we'll leave them as a reserve first.
to see if the main targets, which is the heavy cruiser and the battle cruiser, are taken care of. And at that point, you know, we really can move in with the carrier task force. Who's going to have to move north to launch their airplanes anyway? So I'm glad. This, the submarine almost got me killed. <laughs> this one. Look how far this battle has got. It started over here. We've gone like 800 miles by, you know, being pursued. Something incredible. So. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get to the action in this one. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's good. And we've moved a little bit further in that time. So apparently things are going well. The turn order works. Do not give the move order. Give the turn order. If you want your guys to stay alive. And actually, we can't even go up to this speed because this stuff is about to happen over here. There they are. Unfortunately, like I said, we'll have to call this video to an early close. We didn't really have too much action. Had that nice little fight in next to Guadalcanal. Looks like that might be the only... Solomon Islands are not going to be anywhere near as contested as they were historically. At least that's my feel of it so far. But we'll call this video to a close here. So, sorry I couldn't get to the bombing. We'll do that. Start the next episode off with a bang, which will be nice. So, until then, thanks for watching and take care.